There is a lot of misconception and drama surrounding quant topology versus boolean or n-gon workflow and it could be very confusing especially if you're new to Blender. So in this video we're going to be talking about both of them and hopefully you're going to have a better understanding of when to use them and why. Let's go. Now before we start this, if you're completely new to Blender and you don't know what the hell I'm talking about, don't worry about it, just grab our free course in which we're gonna teach you the very basics of Blender, Blender UI, all the tools, menus, everything you need to know about hard surface, basics, and you're gonna get you started in literally four hours, okay? So go ahead, click the link in the video description, like I said, the course is free. And Gun Topology and Quad Topology are both tools, and you need to know when to use these tools, okay? There's a place for end guns and there's a place for quads. And if you wanted to work for an industry, I suggest you learn both because it's like I said, it's tools and the more tools you have at your disposal, the better. Now, when to use end guns and when to use quads. End guns you can use for concept art and game assets as long as these game assets do not deform or are being used for like, you know, VFX production, etc because that will require most likely quad topology and i'll explain later why so if you're going to create some stuff for game assets you know for games as a game asset or for your portfolio you are perfectly fine with end guns because end guns will hold shading both on flat surfaces but also on curved surfaces if you know what you're doing let me just add a cube here i'm gonna run a bevel and i'm gonna run a, you know uh, some um, boolean here i'm gonna apply it symmetrize it and boom now you can clearly see that shading holds fine and we have two angles here and the reason for that is because we have a flat surface so you don't really need to worry about angles on flat surfaces even if you're running sub d as long as you know what you're doing okay and i can prove it to you right now so i'm gonna grab a cylinder and move it in here and i'm going to grab this one and um, i'm going to insert it once and twice and I'm going to run a sub D, right? And I'm going to symmetrize it to the bottom and shade it smooth. And you can see that it's perfectly fine with a massive angle on top. Like I said, you need to know what you're doing, okay? However, this wouldn't work if you wanted to deform this mesh because we have a massive angle that will not deform. It's just one plane. So, you know, there's not enough mesh on this model in order to deform it. But if it's gonna be a static mesh, you really don't need more than that. In fact, the less the better because it's a lower poly count, okay? Especially when you're using mid poly bevel on models like this, for example, which is going to be one segmented bevel, okay? Now let's talk about curved surfaces and angles, all right? Because I'm sure that a lot of people will tell you it's impossible. No, it's not impossible. You just have to know what the hell you're doing. So let me just run the bevel here. And again, if this model was for concept art or for a game asset, that it's not going to deform, right? And I'm going to run a um, boolean here like this with a bevel. You can see that we have a lot of shading problems. Now, the reason why we have shading problems, you need to understand why, okay, is because we have massive, um, massive angles here that are being bent and they simply cannot support the curvature of this bevel, okay? So if I'm going to apply, let me just duplicate this cube. So uh, Shift D and I'm going to run a unique file on it to apply this cutter and I'm going to move it in here. So now if I'm going to apply this right here, you see that we have this massive angle on here and here and they simply do not support the curvature. So they bend these vertices cause the bending um, of this angle. And that's why you have this shading problem here, right? Now, watch what happens if I'm going to introduce smaller topologies. I'm going to subdivide them manually by running loops through my model, okay? We're going to have some shading issue here because it intersects with uh, here with this vert and the bevel, but I can easily move it, okay? So GG, just move it in here and we're fine. Move this one just a little bit and boom. And you got a clean or cleaner shading. And if I'm going to apply this and actually fix, you know, all these tiny issues here like this, right? You can clearly see that my topology now is still angons, but look at the shading. The shading holds. And the reason why it holds is because these angons are small enough to support the curvature of this bevel, okay? That's why angons are fine on curved surfaces, as long as you're not going to be deforming the mesh or using it for production, because, you know, for production you need very clean mesh. 
you're gonna have close-ups of the models and they have to be ready to for close-up shots they have to be ready for anything basically so th this is why you need very specific type of topology okay so that's angles all right now let's talk about quads now quads you're gonna be needing for anything else like for example organic modeling which has a lot of curvy surfaces so you're gonna be either using cut software which doesn't use polygons or you know sub d or sculpting which does use polygons okay so you also will need it for production models you know for vfx etc right so or you know for anything that deforms right so let me just uh, rotate it and apply it transformations let me subdivide this and add some more topology here and i'm going to curve it with hard ups uh, a little bit okay like this and i'm going to apply this smart apply and shade smooth okay cool now i'm going to add one level of subdivision here actually two levels of subdivision control two right now it's very smooth but look what happens if i'm going to move one of the verts a little bit um off of course so you see the shading is perfectly smooth but watch this reflection what happens watch the reflection right what what will happen if i move this with gg so I slide it on the surface gg a little bit to one side of another you see what, what happens it gets deformed distorted the reason being is because we're distorting the flow of the topology and also we're changing the size so if you wanted to create a really good shading with quad topology you not only have to strive for equal size of topology so size of quads but also you need to maintain the proper flow of topology and that's really important so the direction right you need to follow the direction the direction of the curve right goes like this which means all these edges here are supporting the shading so i cannot move this vert what i could do is move it up or down because this will not change anything the reason being these edges are not really contributing to shading only these edges are contributing to shading yeah you see what i mean so this is why i cannot move these edges up or down now let's talk about cuts if you want to create a cut or detail in your mesh you need to create an edge flow that's going to be surrounding your cut you're going to be going around the shape so let me just show you very brief briefly okay i'm going to grab this shape here and i'm going to insert it and press b to retain this uh, top um, edge here e to extrude it and i'm going to remove these two faces and now look what happened i created an edge flow here around this mesh so if i click alt on this one right it's going to select this whole loop around okay this entire loop supports clean shading on this mesh now obviously we don't have enough topology to support this curve which means our topology is too large if i'm gonna go to um to show you the wireframe these quads are too large okay so if i'm gonna turn off the optimal um, display here these quads are too large to support this curvature if i'm going to add one more level of subdivision this is gonna create a much cleaner result because quads are smaller and then don't bend okay they don't get bent uh, by the abrupt change in the angle here so you need to have enough of topology to support whatever detail you are creating and i'm going to show you another example in a minute so this is really important second important thing is like i said is this edge flow okay this is so important if this edge for example was going i don't know you know down here it you know it wouldn't work okay this wouldn't work right you need to have this edge flowing around the shape now another thing that's really essential is that you need to have these edges okay inside of the loop connecting to the inner loop so this one right perpendicularly so what i mean by that is that um this edge is perpendicular to this edge correct now this one you would say is not perpendicular but in fact it is if you draw an edge here like this right you can see that this edge is perpendicular to this edge and this edge is at 45 degrees here and 45 degrees here that's together 90 degrees both edges this and this one face this inner loop at 90 degrees and that's really important because the closer you get to 90 degrees the cleaner shading you're gonna get all right so remember that your topology needs to always follow the curve and your topology flow is essential for creating clean shading and your topology size is super important for creating details that's going to be you know actually clean and sharp so for instance if i wanted to create a smaller detail here 
and I ran a loop in here, right? And I try to, you know, uh, insert this one and extruded it. It's not gonna work, it's gonna create this kind of a nasty ridge here because I simply have not enough topology to support this tiny detail. What I need to do instead is I need to apply a certain level of subdivision, let's say, you know, level two, in order to uh, be able to add this detail. Now, this is actually my live topology. I can select this uh, loop here. I can select these faces here, insert them, right? Extrude them and insert them one more time. And then I can run sub D on top of this in order to create this, uh, you know, very clean detail, okay? And that's how you'll be able to create very fine detail on your sub D models and that's gonna, you know, produce clean shading. So to sum it up, you need to have a proper size of topology and you also need to have a proper flow of topology. So, you know, the flow and the size are really important for sub D. Now, sub D is much more time consuming and it's a bit more abstract than end gun modeling, Boolean modeling. Although you can mix Booleans with sub D, don't get me wrong. But uh, it will require a bit more work, especially if you're trying to create a bit more complex shape. They're going to involve a lot of, you know, vert moving and adjusting your loops in order to retain the original shading. There are other techniques that you can use, like for example, shrink wrapping onto a guide mesh, which is a technique I picked up from Chris Plush, which is a fantastic technique, but that's a bit more advanced. We're not going to be talking about it here, you know, but for the basics of sub D, these are the main things you need to remember. So again, guys, remember that if someone tells you that you need only quads and if you don't model in quads, you're doing it wrong, they are not correct, okay? Topology needs to follow a purpose. So first you need to think where you want to use your model, okay, how you want to use it, what's going to be the purpose of this model, okay? If you want to sell it on, you know, some website as a game asset, you need to ask yourself a question, will this model going to get deformed? If yes, then you most likely need quads. So if it doesn't, then who gives a shit? If it's, for example, a box or a chest or a, or a gun that will not get deformed, no one gives a shit about end guns. In fact, it's going to be better because you can have lower topology count. So the tris count is going to be much lower with end guns because you don't need to run quads on flat surfaces. You can have massive end guns, right? It doesn't really cause any issues. On the other hand, if you want to have your mesh deformed or used for, you know, production, VFX, etc. You will not only need to use quads, but you're going to have to use quads of specific quality. And the quality is going to be proper size and proper edge flow. I hope this video is going to help you guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.